Hi. Um, okay, so I want to talk about source maps for um, debugging your applications in production. Now, usually when uh, we develop applications, um, the way we write code on the development side is very different than the code that you have in production side. Now, this is just a snippet that I took, well, at least the first one from the CoffeeScript website, and it basically shows you how my, it's just a small snippet, and it shows you how my code in development looks. So it's uh, formatted nicely, it's readable, there's comments, it looks a lot, you know, you can actually work with that, but it's really different than production because to get to production, we usually go through um, compiling the script to a normal uh, plain JavaScript, then we minify it, then we combine a few files together, and then we optimize them, and it looks something like that. Now, this is, well, this is really my code, the small snippet plus Angular, because I'm going to use Angular for the dem demo. Now, now, usually, we don't have any bugs in our code, right? Yeah, right. But let's assume that we do. And in this case, if we work with code that looks like that, it's really, really hard to find where the problem is, which is exactly, which is exactly why source maps is really useful. Now, source maps is really a way to map your production code into your production minified code back in, into its original state. Um, so when you work with that, you know exactly, you, it's like you're running your unminified and uncombined files in the browser. Now, I like to work with CoffeeScript, and CoffeeScript's from version 1.6.1, .1, which I think it's a previous version, ha, um, includes the support for uh, generating source maps. So to generate source maps with CoffeeScript with a compiler, you can, just, uh, you can just pass on the flag of dash m or dash dash map. Now, if we want to, yeah, and we go back to here. So this is the, sm the um, small snippet that I used before. And it's basically just really, really simple. It gives you the square of you know, a number that you enter. And if we want to look at the code which is in our, um, which is in our um, files, you can see that it's really, really simple, you know, um, JavaScript. But if we go to uh, production, and again, we look at a code, uh, so we go back to sources and we look to production, and it looks something that a lot different. Now, Paul Arish did, um, a demo to basically show what source maps are and how they help us. And basically, in the demo, he has code that looks really, really bad, or really, like, I wouldn't say bad, but doesn't look very readable. And then if you basically click on one of the functions, it gives you back where the function is in the original file, which is what source maps gives, gives you. Now, how do we actually make them? How do we make and generate the source maps? To do that for this presentation, I actually used Node and a couple of compilers. So I have Homebrew installed on my computer, and I used Homebrew to install Node, and then I also used uh, Node Package Manager to install a couple of packages, which are the CoffeeScript and the Uglify.js, and I used the dash G flag to just install it globally on my computer. Now, there's other options for minifiers and compilers, like Grunt and other Java-based ones, but in this case, I went with Uglify.js which has currently support for um, generating source maps. Now, first of all, when you work with CoffeeScript, if you work with CoffeeScript, the first thing that you need to do is generate your plain um, JavaScript file. So in this case, I took my application coffee, and I passed a dash M to um, generate the source map, I, um, a dash C to compile, a dash O to tell it where I want the output files, and then grab the file that I want to you know, uh, compile. And that generated two files for me. The first one is my plain JavaScript application.js, and the second one is my map or my source map. Now, the source maps really looks something um, like that, Now, which includes the version number. So source maps has um, a few different versions, and the current version that we're working with is number three. But the important thing to important things to look at here is um, the application JS, which is the generated file that we're working in in, produ in production. Uh, in, under the sources, which, 
Under the sources, you have the original file that we are referencing, which in my case would be my application.coffee. Uh, the name hash or array, it's, if you have a lot more um, functions in your file, it will have a list of all your variables and method names that appear throughout your code. And then the last one, which is the most important thing, is mappings. Now, mappings is not really readable for us. Um, but this is how it finds where all the other the methods that you're looking for. Uh, now, if you're really interested to know how this is created, Ryan Seedon, um, that's presenting tomorrow, wrote a really nice article on HTML5 Rocks that explains about introduction to source maps and then actually talks about how those values have been created. So if anybody feels like reading that, um, I included that in the, in the um, links in the end of the presentation. Yeah, so I talked about uh, CoffeeScript. And then the last thing that we need is we actually need uh, application.js to know where the source map is. So CoffeeScript, the CoffeeScript compiler actually added this comment for us. And it basically tells us that the map is, you know, in my case, really close to where the original file is. Um, next, the second step is, if you have just normal plain J, um, JS files, is to actually take them and minify them. So in this case, I changed to my JavaScript um, directory, and I used uglify.js. I gave it the files that I want to minify, which is my application.js, uh, which is this one. Then again, I gave it. Um, the flag of O for output, which is the file that I want to have in the end, which is my production dot um, minified. I gave it a source map that I want to name as production dot um, minimize dot map. And in this case, because I'm doing it in two stages, you can also add an option for an in source map to take my original application dot map. So it will go through it will go through two stages. It will go through the first map and then it will go to the second map to actually grab the coffee script file, the original one. So yeah, we talked about that, and we talked about that. Now, the thing that I found a problem when I did that is actually when I tried to take two files, which would be my AngularJS, which didn't have you know, a source map, and then application.js, which did have um, a source map, and I tried to minify them together through uglify.js, and then I had a problem because it only took the application.js because I put in the application.map in the options. So that was a bit of a problem when I tried to do that. But basically what it gives us, and I'll go back to my browser, uh, and if I go back here, ah, Sorry. So how do, we, how do we actually see the original files? Um, in, um, OK. So over here, if we, let's look at production first. So we see that we have a small comment here on the bottom. And if we want to actually use that in the browser and see the original file, we need to go to uh, DevTools and actually enable, enable source map in the browser. And then what we need to do is refresh the page. And if we go to our sources, let's close those for a second. And now in our sources, instead of just, um, yeah, instead of just seeing the production.minify.js, it actually shows us the other two that we have. So this is the application one and the Angular one. And if we go to our CoffeeScript one, let's disable that first so we can see the difference. Yeah. Where are we? So it is disabled. OK. So if we run that and we go and we see we only have uh, application.js, but if we enable, where are we? We enable source maps. And we refresh the page. And now we actually also can see application.coffeescript. And you can use that just normal one and basically add breakpoints and debugger and use that for your normal workflow. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the presentation, which is here. Now, which browsers support that? Well, currently, uh, Chrome Canary from version 21 supports source maps. You also have that in WebKit Nightly Build. And you also have that, I think, in Nightly Builds for Mozilla as well. 
Now, if you work with, um, if you work with Rails, there's um, a gem to help you generate source maps. Uh, so it was um, published by Mark Bates, uh, which released this gem, which allows you to get source maps in your Rails app. It basically creates um, a folder that's called asset.sourcemaps into, into your public directory, which you can work with. Now, I would not really recommend um, committing that to your versioning system. And uh, that's fine. And uh, I would actually, if, if, you, if you have a problem, if you have a bug in production that you have a problem with, instead of pushing that to production, I will actually set up your staging environment exactly like production and push your source maps over there so you can debug them um, on staging. Now, because I also really like SAS, um, so as Nicole showed before, when you work with SAS in your development environment, you can actually see where the rules are in your development tools. But when you go back to um, production and you use in Rails asset pipeline or use any kind of other minified options for your um, CSS files, you also have an option of source maps for SAS. Um, there's a really good um, article on uh, NetTut Plus, Tutes Plus, uh, that explains how to get that working. And I'm not sure. I'm definitely. I know that it's available on Chrome that you can use that if you want to. And I think this is pretty much that for me. So thank you.